So hello everyone, welcome again to Security Dev Room. This is Michael Steyer from Red Hat, who will talk about desktop security. Enjoy. Thank you, thank you. So first, thanks for coming so soon in the morning. It's also hard for me, uh, and I'm sorry to say that I have a lot of slides. I speak fast, and I have only 20 minutes, so I excuse in advance. Um, I would also like to, for people to not take pictures, or at least not too much. Tell me if you, can, if you cannot hear me, tell me. Um, uh, so as I said, I'm uh, working at Red Hat. I'm a system administrator in the open source and standard team, which is a team dedicated to a upstream community project. Uh, it's mostly community management, uh, but sometimes we also try to fix uh, various things, for example, infrastructure, which is exactly my job. That's why I'm a system administrator. And I'm here to speak uh, mostly about desktop security, because in the past I had to handle infrastructure <laughs> security problem. And it took me three weeks of my time, and I do not want to do that, so I'm trying to fix the root cause, which is basically fixing developer workflow and fixing server. Today I'm uh, focusing on uh, developer workflow, so making sure that stuff are secure so I do not have to clean after. I do have still my Minecraft server to make run and everything to build. So, yeah, um, just a quick survey. Who here is using Linux on the desktop? Good, perfect. So, um, let's go back to the basics regarding uh, security. Uh, so, for security concepts, there is a lot of paper out there. But uh, one of the ways to define security is to speak about CIA, not the bad guy in the James Bond movie, but uh, about availability, making sure that your system are working properly, making sure that people that can read something are the only people authorized to read something, and making sure that people uh, who are not supposed to modify something are not modifying something. That's the basic principle for security from a theoretical point of view, and we will go back later on um, why we need that. And if we want to achieve this property, we need to think uh, who wants to break that. And most of the time, there is mostly two types of attacker, which are described in some papers that I forgot to type in my notes about um, Mossad or not Mossad. So that's basically either <laughs> automated low skill one, like uh, some kind of form or brute force SSH and this kind of stuff, who happen quite a lot. Anybody reading SSHD log, because there is nothing on TV, will see that a lot of people are trying to uh, attack that. And there is a APT, which is not the Debian Packager. I'm working at Red Hat, I'm not trying to attack Debian. It's an <laughs> advanced persistent threat. It's people that really want to get you and who have time, and most of the time money, because well, time is money and you do not pay hacker to just uh, watch that when there is a lot of stuff to do. And usually that's what people refer when they say, oh, the NSA is trying to get on your infrastructure and this kind of stuff. But sometimes it can be uh, anyone else. It can be that sysadmin that you uh, did uh, that you did humiliate at Quake uh, last time, that a neighbor that do not like you and want to get you and this kind of stuff. You are not always fighting against uh, someone with a lot of money, but most of the time someone with a lot and a lot of time. So I will just clear some, assum oh, some assumption on what we want to secure. Uh, I will assume that people are running laptop because workstation is just a subset of the problem of laptop. Um, a laptop is just a workstation mobile, a mobile workstation. And you just add the problem of someone will steal it, someone will be able to resell it. So first, for security, it should be quite obvious. I'm giving that talk to a lot of people, but we are at FOSDEM, so start by using free software. And it's not to antagonize people not running free software, but if you cannot inspect anything, if you cannot choose what you want, it's quite hard to make sure it's secure. Um, use supported software. It seems to be also obvious, um, but discussing with people, this is not the case. For example, I know that Feather 9 was a better distribution because it was before SystemD and Pulse Audio, but seriously, stop using it. Um, recent distro get better stuff. Uh, by better, I mean a lot of security improvement. I'm pretty sure that people will be able to talk about that later in the day, so I'm not going to uh, speak about this. Um, do not use random repository. Um, it's pretty nice that you can get uh, random Blender stuff from uh, PPA. But most of the time, people have no idea on what they are doing, and you cannot see what they are doing or not. And that's how you get packages that are not updated, or packages with a crop software or anything. If you choose a distribution, you need to check the build system. Um, some are highly secure, where you build everything 
in a way separated from internet with uh, auditing and everything and some of them are just uh, let's build that on a windows laptop and update it without checking so yeah basically take a mainstream distribution verify how it works and you should be fine make sure that it's supported then for installation well you need to use an encrypted disk uh, it seems to be obvious but lots of people do not do that I would recommend to use a Lux and full disk encryption. <coughs> um, last time I did the presentation, people did ask me about uh, VeraCrypt and TrueCrypt. I do not know if they are good or not. I remember there is an audit that was done for TrueCrypt and it seems to be secure. My main problem is that it's not integrated in distribution, so maybe it's not maintained enough. Maybe it's not as seamless it, as it would. So go back to the part about supported system. Um, and so the question is, why do you need th that? Well, it's mostly because my well, laptop are mobile, and it's quite easy to steal one. It happened to a friend of mine two days ago. It happened to people in the office. It happened lots of time. And if the disk is not encrypted, most of the time, the laptop is just sold on the black market. And sometimes there is document, like secret MI6 document. It did happen in the past several times. So yeah, you just need to do that to protect from someone stealing your laptop. <coughs> so, of course, it's not perfect. Uh, there is what we call cold boot attack, where people just take your laptop when it's, about, when it's suspended and take out the chips from memory and then dump it and turn out that the key is somewhere in memory. It's um, quite hard to do without uh, soldering. This laptop has a memory uh, soldered, so you cannot do that easily, but you can do that from uh, other laptop. There is an attack called Evil Made, where someone replaces your bootloader with a bootloader that records the password. So you type the password. This is fully automated with a GitHub project called Evil Abigail. To protect from that, you can use Secure Boot, which will make some uh, free software purists uh, uh, cry, but um, it's working. It's not integrated in distribution as far as I know, which is a shame. So if you want to make me uh, happy, please integrate that in your distribution. Uh, you can start to use TPM, which is another way to make a free software purist cry. Um, Secure Boot is using TPM. This is used to verify the integrity of the boot and everything like this. I'm not going to speak more because I have only 20 minutes. And there is various anti velmid uh, trick. Uh, Matthew Garrett did propose a TPM OTP something, I think, one year ago. Uh, where basically each time you boot, you get a verification number to verify with your phone to see that no one tampered with your laptop. Usually it's quite easy to carry your laptop everywhere you go, but it's not practical. I do that and it starts to be quite heavy. If you want to get something usable, you need to have a lot of battery and everything. Um, yeah, TPM OTP is not really easy to use, but that's the kind of stuff that we should integrate. Then there is fun attack. Uh, for example, did people knew that a firewire can be used to dump memory? I guess the answer is no. Uh, on some old MacBook, and likely on Lenovo laptop, you can use a tool called Inception. You just plug two laptops together, one pretend to be a firewire uh, system, and just dump the memory with the uh, uh, key that we were looking. Despite having lots of MacBook and uh, unprotected laptop from salespeople in the office, I was never able to test, mostly because I was never able to identify what cable I need on Amazon, <laughs> which is uh, quite bad, but I'm pretty sure it should be working. Um, so to protect against all of that, there is various alternative approach. Uh, bootloader on a USB stick. It's much easier to carry the USB stick with you. It's usually uh, simple, you can get in, uh, in your pocket. I mean, I have deep pocket, but not to put my laptop there. There is a system with a grub support of Lux, so everything is encrypted except Lux. There is some uh, self-encrypted stick. Uh, it seems to exist on Amazon. I would not recommend that because this is proprietary hardware. I do not know how it works. Uh, there are some people who suggest using the fingerprint reader. Uh, it's quite easy to copy. If you are fighting against NSA, Mossad, whatever, I would avoid that. If you want something that works, I would also avoid that. Uh, mine is quite crappy. I need to do it five times, and I'm pretty sure that no anybody can fake my fingerprint. And so yeah, so that's just for the boot. Something to take a look at is various USB attack. So if you find a random key on the parking lot, do not plug it on your laptop. 
Um, if someone wants to test uh, something, there is a Poison Tap and Raspberry Pi Zero, which is a nice uh, attack where you plug something on your laptop and it appears as a network device and start to siphon the whole traffic and attack your browser. It's quite efficient. I have not been able to test on my favorite salesperson because I was not able to finish uh, the setup before leaving for FOSDEM, but I will report next year how it works. <coughs> and if they decide to fire me for testing on sales, there is uh, all kinds of file system bugs. I'm pretty sure that people who did compile their own kernel did see that there is like 20 file systems that you never heard of, like the file system for Amiga and everything. Uh, you can be pretty sure that there is bug because no one is using them, so no one is looking for security bugs. Um, you do not want to have a security bug on a file system running in the kernel. It's just bad. There is USB stack bugs, basically. Again, there is a lot of crap. We are doing anything. For that, you can use something called the USB guard. Um, this is done by a developer at Red Hat. Just look for USB guard. It prevents auto mounting from a random device. And I will spoke about speak. I will stop to speak about that because hardware security as a whole is completely depressing. Uh, if people want to Chaos Computer Congress, not last year, the year before, there is a talk by uh, Joanna Rudkova who explained how everything is completely broken. If you, do not, if you are too happy in life, just watch that, and then you will start to become uh, depressed and sysadmin, as depressed as a sysadmin. So yeah, if you really want, I would recommend QBOS. I'm not running it because, well, I'm trying to be corporate, so I'm running RHEL 7. Um, but maybe next time for my next laptop, I will try to do that. Uh, someone has to fill the memory of my uh, laptop. So yeah, let's back to the OS and back to the basics. Of course, you need to use a strong password. I will not discuss on what is a strong, uh, because people always uh, disagree on that. Uh, I just want to remind you to take human factor in account. If you have a 20 uh, letter password, yeah, that's nice, but maybe it's hard to remember. And sometimes if you are in a hurry, for example, you are at a pub, and suddenly everything is broken and you need to fix it, and it turns out that you drink too much, you cannot type your password, that's bad. It's not at all what happened to me, <laughs> uh, just to make sure. Um, use a password manager. One solution is to not keep data on the laptop, uh, which is sometimes doable. That's what uh, Chrome OS is doing. Sometimes it's not doable when you have no internet connectivity, like when you are traveling to Belgium. Um, you can use separate user. This is usually cumbersome and uh, annoying, and you are likely to miss uh, something and not use the right user. You can start to use separate computer. I do not have to explain how it's expensive, but um, if you have one computer to surf on Facebook and one computer to play uh, with your server, it can be done. Then again, um, it's quite heavy. Um, uh, to prevent remote exploit, well, obviously a firewall. Um, that seems to be <laughs> basics, but again, I find a lot and a lot of people who say, oh, firewall, I do not want to have one. Um, there is a problem with firewall because it breaks stuff, but I think we should fix that uh, in depth. So disable what uh, you do not need, even if you want to just uh, set up a PHP MySQL uh, stuff, well, disable and make sure that nobody can access it. Uh, make sure that whatever you install, uh, do not listen on the network. It can be even better to use VM and Vagrant. Uh, I think I have the slide to say container can be a solution. I think I should have removed. It can be a solution if you have too much free time. But for now, it's not mature enough. And you need to wait on people to do integration. So virus scanners are dangerous. I do not know if you've seen the research from uh, the guy at Google, Travis. And basically, every, every antivirus are bad. Uh, Clama had several security issues. Most of the time, they do not find anything, so maybe it's working for Windows, but I'm not a Windows user, so I will go on against that. Oh, it seems that I had a slide about IPv6 and Shodan. So if you have IPv6, uh, it's quite nice, but you might be scanned immediately by Shodan. It was much more interesting last year when I did the talk because it was new. Now it's old stuff, so people do not care. And if you want to know more about how people get attacked, I recommend also the TIO NSA talk from uh, Enigma last year. 
So TAO is a tailored access operation, which is basically people giving access to the NSA, also called hacker in the movie. And they explain how they do stuff, what they do, like we are waiting and we are scanning everything. We have a lot of uh, documentation, more documentation on your network than you have, which is nice. I mean, they should publish it. It will save me uh, some work. And most of the time, the vector of attack, if you look at our report and everything, well, that's basic phishing. Um, we have seen with the DNC leak, uh, phishing can be quite efficient. People say, yeah, you need to enter your password and everything. Two-factor authentication can prevent that, but not so much, especially uh, when using with mobile phone. But I'm not speaking at all about mobile phone. It's completely broken. <coughs> Obviously, you do not uh, open a random attachment. Do not do like me who try to run a virus on wine just to see if it works. It's a bad idea, because sometimes it works. Um, what you can do is use a sandbox, uh, as a Linux sandbox, for example. Uh, I have a coworker who is using a throwaway VM based on Gen2 and everything. And he did that in half a day just because we're starting to say, yeah, you cannot do that that fast. He said, OK, I'm going to do it. And he did that in the afternoon. So yeah, so Linux uh, sandbox. Uh, fire jail, except that fire jail is broken, so do not do that. I should have updated that slide. Um, well, not Docker, because Docker is too complicated. It's not made for that. Um, it seems to be better, but it's not made especially for that kind of security. If you are really uh, motivated, you can turn on SL Linux on the desktop. Currently, on Well 7, it contains some process, like Flash, which is a good idea, <laughs> and not so much more. Um, I would be happy if someone can contribute more policy. Uh, you can also, if you are working in the military, use the MCS policy, where you say it is top secret and only process for uh, secret defense can access it and this kind of stuff. It's also quite hard to set up, but if the military can, you can too. You can get a container contained user, uh, which is what the SL Linux guy at Red Hat are doing. And they speak about what they do, like one user that can only browse the web and everything like this. So there is uh, still a lot of work to do. Um, you can also oh, wait, wait, wait. Look at Flatpak. Uh, there is likely some uh, presentation about that. This is basically the future, and it will be likely contained with something like uh, AppArmor or SL Linux. And then I have a lot of slides about browser security because browser is a huge uh, door to your system. So you have to choose between Chrome and Firefox. I tend to prefer uh, Firefox because. Uh, there is less conflict in interest between my interest as a user and the interest of the, of the company. So remove Flash, block Java by default, uh, if you cannot remove it. Uh, block multimedia content, because multimedia is all kind of parser, complicated stuff, optimized for performance. So it's better if you do not autoplay. Um, we did see some uh, issue with that in the past, and there is a presentation about that specific topic in a few uh, hours. WebGL and direct 3D access, well, basically your browser will access directly your hardware by passing the kernel. Uh, I hope I do not have to explain why it's bad and why the drivers are likely full of bugs and everything. Same goes for WebRTC. <coughs> That's um, asking for trouble from a network point of view. Um, set a master password for your password, again, in case someone get access to your backups. Um, use uh, stuff like HTTPS everywhere to protect your password, no script. It's a pain in the ass, but I think it's worthwhile. Start password to verify if someone is uh, changing the certificate. Most of the time, it's just likely Starbucks trying to emit EMU. Sometimes it's the Chinese government. Um, you cannot really see the difference. If you are really paranoid, you can use, uh, you can remove all the CA. And well, there is rawhammer.js. Uh, I will let you the surprise for that one because it's really scary. You can, well, I do have a lot of slides of privacy and mass surveillance and how NSA tracking people over the web, putting exploit in advertisement. And it's even better with precise targeting, because we can say, yeah, I want to send that targeted advertisement to that people, to that person right there. So it's so much easier to just send you what that specific payload to you. So again, stuff like Adblock, Cookie Monster. And my time is up, so I will just uh, skip fast and say, if you have any questions, uh, <laughs> do ask them. <laughs>
because I did a lot of, lot and lot of stuff. So yeah. So I guess we'll thank Michael for yeah. for the talk, and I'm sure there's more material here. And there's more material, but I think we also have five minutes for questions. So raise your hand if you want to raise, uh, ask a question, and we'll pass around the mic. Anyone? Yeah. Oh, So you mentioned a firewall. On my laptop, I have zero ports open, incoming. Uh, so what does the firewall help me there? Well, in case someone decides to open a port for you, the firewall will help. I don't know who did ask the question. Because Any more questions? Yeah. Uh, do I yes. need to repeat the question? Yes. OK, so the question is, I have no open, firewall, no, no open port on my laptop. What a firewall will achieve? And in, in case something do open a firewall, uh, open a port, the firewall will prevent it from doing anything. Like someone try to exploit you, it can block. It's a second line of defense against the first line, which is being secure enough. Uh, hello. Uh, yeah. How do you think you can convince non-technical users to block multimedia content? I think you can't. Um, my presentation is mostly targeted as the people who will be targeted by that. For regular users, what we need is more content. If there is a problem with the multimedia content, we need to make sure that, for example, the parser is uh, not able to access the internet of this kind of stuff. But that's something that requires coding and that cannot be done now. So I will be happy if people start to work on that. Making sure, for example, that uh, some da thumbnails in uh, GNOME are contained making sure that Firefox start to do stuff in separate process without anything like Chrome is doing. Uh, but in the meantime, I want to get something that people can do now and for stuff that can be done later. Well, it can be done later. But yeah, Thanks. it's, yeah. And I forgot the question was, uh, how do we convince regular non-technical users to block uh, multimedia content? More questions? Hello. In one of the slides that you put, you put after your speech, you, uh, I saw YubiKey. Yeah. Do you recommend YubiKey? So I would recommend the YubiKey to store SSH key. Um, you cannot see from here, but I do have one uh, to just to store my SSH key. So someone will attack my laptop. He will be able to use the YubiKey when I'm connected, but he cannot steal it and use it for something else later. Uh, do not specially recommend YubiKey versus other stuff. It's just that I got YubiKey because it's on Amazon, and I could not get my hand on a new Twoki or regular smart card. But it's mostly, yeah, I would recommend it. And it also do universal two-factor, uh, which is quite interesting. Because if you turn two-factor and it's not using SMS, you suddenly have uh, 1,000 uh, lines on your application on your phone. And one phone is bad, and secondly, 1,000 line is not a proper UX. Using a YubiKey and U2F, you can get something, um, something workable, in my own opinion. So okay. if people want to contact me, uh, do not use it because I do not use that. You can <laughs> use uh, misscatwedat.com, or you can find me on IRC, but uh, LibreOffice decided that blue on black was a good idea. <laughs> So you can find me on Freenode, on anything. You can ping me uh, after first them, if possible. And um, yeah. if anybody okay. has any question, last one. Yeah, I think we had um, one minute more for one last question, if anyone is. And people can also ask me later outside. Oh, a misc on IRC .etual. So for example, on Freenode, on um, well, OFTC and other stuff. So can just look for MISC on your favorite IRC network or by mail. Okay, let's thank Michael for...